Welcome to Truth in History. God's true people, Israel. Revelation of God's plan. Fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Mystery of God shall be finished. Kingdoms become kingdoms of Christ. Truth in History with Charles A. Jennings. Welcome once again to Truth in History. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. It's the day and age in which we should lift our voices high and loud and worship our God, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, King of kings and Lord of lords. On the program today is Pastor Ron Poach from the state of Georgia. He has been with us before. He has been a wonderful blessing to this congregation as you listen, and also to our local congregation at church. He's been a good friend, and he's here today to share the word of the Lord and fresh manna from heaven. And I want to say, welcome, <laughs> Pastor Poach. Good to be with you. I want to read a scripture before um, Brother Ron speaks, and that is found in Matthew chapter 16. And I want to read verses 13, 14, 15, and 16. A very familiar passage of Scripture. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, He asked His disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. What a revelation! And today on the program, as Brother Ron brings us a fresh word from heaven, he will give us some of the words that were spoken by our Savior Himself, the Son of the living God. And I want to say, Brother Ron, just take your liberty and share with us what the Lord has laid on your heart and mind. Well, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Brother Charles. It's good to be with you today, and I'm very, very thankful that the Lord has opened up the Scripture. He has a lot for us. We, we're on a table, and He has a lot for us to eat. I mean, there are so many things that the Lord has. First of all, there's milk. The Bible says, desire the sincere or the pure milk of the word that you might grow thereby. And uh, then there's um, meat. Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. And that was at the water, uh, the woman at the water by the well. And uh, <clears throat> the woman at the well <laughs> of water, that was Jacob's <laughs> well. Well, I'll tell you what, it gets fun around here. Charles, it's <laughs> delightful. Uh, then uh, Paul said, Strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age who have their senses exercised to, do, to discern between good and evil. And there's one thing that I do know, that there is also another food called hidden manna, and that's behind the veil. And we've got to go into the Ark of the Covenant or the presence, which symbolized the presence of God to Amen. get that information. Hallelujah. I pray that this information that we share today will be a strength to you. I am not a topical preacher. I don't just use one text, but what, what I desire to do is to weave scriptures together to provide a tapestry that we can see what the Lord is saying and that it's visual to us and we can begin to comprehend and see the larger picture. And that's what I'd like today uh, to do today, to take the, the scriptures from the Old Testament and the New Testament and weave them together, the warp and the woof, and to see what God can bring out of this to enhance our understanding. He's got a lot of things for us to eat. I'd like to have some hidden manna behind Amen. the veil. Praise God. Um, 
What I want to do is turn to the book of Matthew. You were in chapter 16, Brother Charles, and I'm going to be in chapter 15. And Jesus said, hear and understand. A lot of people hear a word today. We can listen to a broadcast on uh, the radio or watch on television, join in. But Jesus said, hear and understand or comprehend. The fact of the matter is Jesus was about to uncover some people who were blind to the truth and they happened to be religious leaders. Look what the scripture says. In verse 10 of the 15th chapter, he said to the multitude, hear and understand, not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Then came his, his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? Now the Pharisees were the religious leaders. Jesus did upset people. He made them mad. He made them glad. Uh, the, glad uh, the people heard him gladly, the poor people. But G Jesus said, and answered, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be raptured. No, shall be root, <laughs> rooted up. Let, and here's what he said. I'm just joking there. He said, Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, what's going to happen? It says they're both going to fall into the ditch. I've often wondered, what is the ditch, yeah, Brother Charles? That's a good you know, question. yeah. And this happens to fall in line with the historicist position of exposition of, of prophecy. They fall into the ditch. What are you talking about? Stay out of the ditch, evidently. <clears throat> I don't want to be blind. I think that blindness is a terrible curse. And um, one of the things that would be uh, very difficult to endure in life, number one, is Alzheimer's or losing your mind. Mm -hmm. Another thing is blindness. I would rather have a limb cut off than have my eyes, oh, yeah. to lose my eyes or lose my hearing. I do have selective hearing when it comes <laughs> sometimes to my wife, but that's just an aside. But what I want to share with you today is what is the ditch and how can I avoid the ditch? It, scripture interprets scripture. And so if you will, turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 27. Proverbs 23, 27. Get your Bibles, get them out, check out the scriptures for yourself. See that I'm not trying to pick a scripture out here, but what we want to do is harmonize the word of God and really begin to see what God is saying. It says in verse 27 of Proverbs 23, for an harlot, now in the King James, it says, a whore. But I'm going to read from the New King James, which uses the word harlot. For a harlot is a deep what? Hmm. Ditch. Ditch, yeah. And an alien or a strange woman is a narrow pit. Turn back to chapter 22 and verse 14. It says, the mouth of a strange woman is a deep pit. He that is abhorred by the Lord shall fall therein. Jesus said, let the blind religious leaders alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, they both fall into the ditch. They fall into a harlot system. Now, People say, well, I, I, I don't understand what you're saying. Well, Scripture will interpret Scripture. Turn to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 17, 
gives a definition of what this harlot system is. And we're not talking about futurism, we're not talk which is a, a fast-paced, frenetic, hurried movement toward the future. Everything's going to happen in the last seven years of life on the planet after the rapture of the church, so-called. Or it's preterism, and that's having a rear-view mirror and looking backward to 70 AD. Now, I know things happen historically, and God is moving in history. That's why this ministry, Truth and History, is very important because it gives a, a it shows a flow of truth how God unveils his word to his people and he does it in a time frame and sequence, time frame in a sequence which is a blessing for us to comprehend and understand. Now, in the 17th chapter, now get this, Jesus said the blind fall into the ditch, and they are blind leaders. He said, let them alone. Mm. Then Proverbs said that a strange woman is a deep pit. A, a, a harlot is a deep pit. It's a, it's a deep ditch. And here in the 17th chapter, it says in the book of Revelation, it defines this woman and gives her name. It says, there came one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls and talked with me, saying, Come here, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great harlot that sitteth upon many waters. What is this great harlot, and what are the waters? Well, verse 15, skip down to verse 15 with me. He saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the harlot sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So this woman, this harlot system, has influence. I believe it's financial. I believe it's economic. I believe that it's religious. I believe that it, it has educational systems behind it. It has legal systems behind it. And look what the scripture goes, and let's go back to verse 2, to show you how integrated the world is in history with this harlot system. And you're blinded if you can't see. So I'm asking God, arise and shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Amen. It said nations will come to our rising when we begin to see the outline of scripture here. Amen. Verse two Amen. says, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. This is the political system. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Her teachings, we've been inebriated, we can't see clearly. And uh, when you're drunk, you don't have faculties of thinking and powers of discernment. Oh, folks, listen, the blindness. Now watch what it says. And this is what we need to do. It says, so he carried me out away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and 10 horns. Not going into the description of this, but just to stay out of the ditch. It says, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and bedecked with gold. I mean, you're talking about a wealthy system and precious stones and pearls. Where did this woman get all of this adornment, all of her clothing? She stole it from the priesthood of Israel, of the tribe of Levi, because it tells you in the Old Testament that they had a breastplate with pearls and diamonds, and, you know, we enter in through a gate of pearl, meaning suffering, but this woman has got all, this harlot system has got all this wealth. And it says <clears throat> that she got a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. The nations have become drunk on this. And you talk about 
uh, the filth of the world and the filth that's coming into our homes by way many times mm. of, of television, Hollywood, and these things, it's filled with the occult. Yeah. And uh, the Bible says, verse 5 says, here's where you fall. It says, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great wonder. You say, okay, I get it. Jesus said, hear and understand, comprehend what I'm about to tell you. It's not what goes into the mouth. The Pharisees became offended, and Jesus said, they're blind leaders of the blind. Let them alone. There are just some people you need to leave alone. There are some bridges you need to burn. That's right. There are some organizations you need to get out of. Jesus right. said, come out of her, my people and be not partaker of her plagues. Paul the apostle said, you can't have relations with a harlot and not be contaminated. You sometimes just have to leave. And I, I believe me, I, I don't want to cast shibboleths and uh, throw darts at anybody or any organization. I, I want to see people receive Christ. I want to... Had, I want to see Amen. them receive the fullness of the Spirit. But stay away from this Babylonian system. Get out of it. Come out of her, my people. Be not partaker of her sins. Amen. Come out and Thank be God. separate, says the Lord, and I will receive you as a son, says the Lord. And daughters, you'll be mine when I make up my jewels. This woman's got jewels, but God does too. And you're one of them. You're the repository of truth. He wants to take away the falsehoods out of our thinking. Uh, all of these things which have contaminated Christianity. I mean, this year, uh, 2017, we're celebrating the 500th year of a man that came out of Babylon, as it were, out of a religious system, and he tacked a 95 thesis up the church door in Wittenberg, and at the end of October of 2017, uh, yeah, 2017, it, we're celebrating the 500th year. That's 10 jubilee periods that have gone across, uh, you know, our world, this time frame, and God has been working in a reformation. We need a new reformation. Amen. Thank we God. need God to move in our hearts like never before because the situation describes itself in the book of Judges. Turn with me to the book of Judges, chapter 16. And this is a story of a man that had... A, a miracle birth. I, I, I know I'm excited about this, Brother Charles, <laughs> but I want you to see what happened to a judge in Israel that got off track and he let down the standard of his life. He didn't do what God said. He had, his name was Samson. And uh, in chapter 16, look at this. The perfect parallel that we find in the Bible with regard to the story of Samson. And it says, Then went Samson to Gaza, and he saw there an harlot, and went in unto her. Remember what Jesus said? Let them alone. Yeah. They fall into the ditch. Proverbs Solomon said, A harlot is a deep ditch. Stay out of the ditch. Revelation describes what the ditch is. The ditch is Babylon. Stay out of Babylon. Stay out of confusion. Stay out of religious confusion. Come out of man-made doctrines. Come out of uh, all these sordid uh, last-day things that are supposed to take place. There are so many, so many gimmicks, so many fetishes, so many... Uh, magic talismans, believe this, and you're going to be safe. And, you know, if, if you've got a, a salvation, if you've got a theology that you don't have any troubles and you don't have any worries, 
you got a bad theology. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you just do. Yeah. Jesus did not die on Calvary. Believe me, he did not die on Calvary to take away just all of your problems. He came to take away your sins. He wants you to be an overcomer. Hallelujah, all the promises in the book of Revelation are given to overcomers. I do get excited about this, and I'm excited now, but this story here is powerful about Samson. He went into the ditch, and what happened? Jesus said the blind lead the blind. What yeah. happened to Samson? It says, she made him sleep upon her knees. That's in verse 19 of the uh, 16th chapter. She made him sleep. The church is asleep. Awake thou that sleepest, and Christ shall give thee light, illumination. That's what Isaiah says. And what did she do? She called for a man, and ca she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him, and his strength went from him. And she said, watch this, the Philistines are upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not, or he knew not, that the Spirit of God had departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes. What happened? My God, he became blind. Yeah. He was blinded. He fell into the ditch. But that's not the end of the story. His hair began to grow back, but he was still blinded. You know people today in the country of America are blinded by the forces of the Philistines, which means to roll in the dust. We have been blinded to our national identity. We've been blinded to our personal identity. We've been blinded to our identity in Christ Jesus our Lord. People don't know that they are the perhaps the literal physical seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They don't know that. They've lost their identity. They've lost their sight. They've lost the ability to perceive. They've, they've lost the ability to comprehend and understand that God is calling them to a place of light. When it, when it says that darkness has covered the earth in that 40th chapter of Isaiah, when it says that, what, what is that talking about? It's talking about ignorance. We're spiritually ignorant. Yeah. I, I believe that what we need is a good old fashioned return to an altar of dedication, of prayer, of yieldedness to God. There's just something wonderful about old school. Yeah. I love the old hymns of the church. Amen. I, Charles, Amen. I do. I miss it. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's Me not too. that the, the modern choruses, some of them aren't wonderful, but some of them are, they're, they're so frivolous. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it takes a genius to be, begin to un, you get a Rosetta Stone and interpret it for me yeah. because I don't understand. But a mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark, Amen. never failing. Hallelujah. A victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me beneath the cleansing flood. Hallelujah. I, I, I thank God for th these great hymns of the church. We've been blinded, folks. We've fallen into Babylon. We've fallen into excess. We've fallen into frivolity. We've fallen into just games and thinking that buildings are going big, ornate buildings are going to draw us. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but we need the power of God. We need a recovery of the altar of God in America. Amen. A personal altar of God of repentance so that we can wipe our eyes and see. Samson wanted the touch of God so much in his life that he was willing to die for it. He couldn't, he didn't know where the pillars were, but you know what he did? He said to a little boy, it says a man child. He saw a little man-child and said, guide me to the pillars. This blind colossus of America, I pray that there's a man-child ministry that can bring you over to the pillars so that we can see our enemies destroyed before us 
and the very systems that were put in place, the very, the very schools, the Ivy League schools that taught the Word of God were preacher factories are now the very things that are tearing down America. Amen. That's They're destroying true. our the, the very morality of a people that love God. We need to know history. That's why this ministry is so very vital. Charles, I'm so very thankful. Uh, and uh, not to pat you on the back or things like that. You don't need that. You know how valuable the ministry is. God put it on your heart. You've been faithful to the vision. I thank God for it. Hallelujah. We have a vision to see. And when you join with somebody in a vision, you're blessed to be able to disseminate truth and share the Word of God. Now, who is blind? Let's look in the remaining couple minutes that we've got to the book of Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. The scripture says in uh, verse 18, I'll start with verse 16. I will bring the blind by a way that they know not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. Isn't that wonderful? And then it says, in verse 18, Hear ye deaf, and look ye blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant? Are you a servant of God? I, I need to have my eyes open in certain areas. Who is blind? And three times he mentions blindness. Or deaf is the messenger that I sent. Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as the Lord's servant? Mm -hmm. That could be you. That could be me. I pray that God opens our eyes to the truth of his word. Pharisees were offended. Jesus said, let them alone. They're blind leaders of the blind. They fall in, they're both going to fall into the ditch. I want to be extricated out of Babylon. So, Brother Charles, it really has been wonderful to be with you today. Amen. And I thank you for this time of yes. sharing. I, I count it an honor and I count it a privilege to share. Amen. Thank you, Brother Ron. That was a marvelous, powerful message, and I appreciate it greatly. We must not fall into the ditch, and if you're in the ditch, crawl out of the ditch. <laughs> yes. You know, come out of her, my people, is, is, the, is the word for the last day ministry has come out of her, come out of Babylon. We appreciate Ron, we appreciate every one of you that have watched this program, and we pray that you have been greatly blessed. We will see you next time in the name of the Lord. For any material offered on this program, or to be a part of this ministry, please write or call today. We thank you, and may God bless you for your response to this end time ministry. Truth in History, where the Word of God is not found.